this is Vikas here from We Engineers and today I am with the next video in Arduino series where we are going to interface ESC2860 module with Arduino. Ethernet sticks for Arduino comes with Wizard controller which are basically costlier as compared to your ESC2860. So basically ESC2860 is a like a cheaper solution to have internet connection or like internet connection to Arduino. It's basically having a SPA port that we can uh, interface with Arduino and have internet connection to our Arduino module. So one issue with the NC2860 is like it doesn't have onboard memory uh, unlike like WizNet controller which uh, Arduino students are nowadays using. So for that we need to like provide memory from Arduino for the internet controller. That puts a uh, limitation to our port size. Otherwise we will run into memory issues. For today's video, we are going to use Ethercard library that is being maintained by Elabs, which you obviously can download right below. I provide the link. So guys, let's check it out. So guys, this ENC2860 module comes with SPI interface. So to interface with any microcontroller, we need to have a SPI port in our microcontroller. Before going to connect, like uh, connecting it to the Arduino, I just like to say ENC2860 modules are available in uh, like different flavors in the market. So like this one is having a uh, larger like PCB, and this one having a smaller PCB but no onboard voltage regulator, and this one over here this is having a onboard voltage regulator. So just keep in mind. The connections for different ENC2860 modules differs. But so basically, uh, the, if the pin never changes, but the pin position changes. So you just need to plug it differently for different ENC2860 modules. So whenever you are replacing one old ENC2860, so let's see how to connect it to Arduino. So just I am taking one ENC2860 module over here. As you know, SPI interface requires four wires like the MOSI, MOSI, MISO, serial clock, SCK pin, and one chip circuit pin. So, say we connect our ENC2 adjustment rule like this, and the first pin. So, see guys, this is a particular for this model, so it will a lot likely for everyone. Or every module just change it as for your module whatever you are having so we are going to plug so we are going to plug the 3.3 volt or the input voltage supply to our Arduino's power supply so over here I can just plug it on then next pin goes to ground so except those we are left with four pins like meso mozi sck and chip select and in Arduino, 11 12 13 pin correspondence to mozi meso and sck and at chip select we are going to use the pin number 10 so connect it accordingly connect your ENC2860 modules meso pin which is like this one to the Arduino's meso pin so you are so going to connect it to the pin number 12 then next is your mozi pin so you will be connected to the 11 pin next is the SCK so it will connect to 13 and uh, for chip select we are connected to 10 now we are going to plug in the ethernet cable to the ENC2860 and USB cable to the Arduino See, 
over here the EN power indicator of ENC2 electricity module is growing that means it's getting power and you can see here over here the in network in uh, LEDs are blinking that means they are getting connected to the network so let's get back to the ID and we'll see how to communicate with the server using this controller there are actually many more libraries available for interfacing ENC2 electricity with Arduino but for this we are going to use Ethercard so let's uh, just google Ethercard and so over here you can follow up the github link just click it so from here you can just click on download chip and it will uh, download the total library into the system and we need to include that library in our Arduino so I am not going to include that because I have already included and I am already having that so let's get back to the ID and I have a little program already written over here so I am just going to copy it and you can just download it by following the link given below so I'll just go through this program let's save it with some, some name so this is a simple application that will send some data to a server and it prints out the returned data from the server so let's go through the code first is like the as well the library to be included next is your program whatever IP address you are going to use so this IP address is of your server so don't forget to change over here then it says basically session byte then this is the important thing over here byte ethernet buffer 800 what it does is actually ENC2 AG60 doesn't have onboard memory to process data like uh, WizNet W5 uh, W0 or whatever Arduino is using currently as its official ethernet field that has onboard memory but ENC2 AG60 doesn't have any onboard memory so you can just like um, provide memory or buffer for the ENC2 AG60 and that is kind of reserved for the particular module from your Arduino so here I have defined 800 bytes of memory to, for the ENC2 AG60 so next is the timer just to like run the task periodically next is the stats stats is something that holds our post or get data whatever you are going to send into the server next I have declared some variables over here okay. next is uh, like serial port initialization whatever the next is the important function init network that actually a user defined which I have written so go to init network so over here this is the initialization port for the ENC2 existing model so first thing over here is the my mac or whatever mac id you are going to use for the enc2 g60 actually enc2 g60 modules doesn't come with like mac address specified on it so you can just provide it any mac address of your choice then next is your ip don't forget to configure it according to your network then dns if you are going to communicate with the internet or cloud server then you need to configure this one the gateway of your network then the net mask and this function ether.begin and then buffer then your mac id and this actually number over here correspondence to your csp so as uh, earlier you have seen we have connected the pin number 10 as the chip select pin so we are going to write 10 over here and if you have connected to any other digital pin you can just simply display over here and 
uh, this function returns as false if it has successfully initialized the ENC2 registry module and if it returns true if it was not able to access the ENC2 registry module you can check it out you can just remove wires and you can just run it so it will print into the console that failed to access your hand card then is like over here I have defined static IP for my ENC2 registry module you can just set it dynamic uh, if you are going to specify DHCP over here then don't need to mention this over here like IP, DNS, gateway and something so as for my network I am going to configure it as static because that helps me manage my nodes and all so over here it turned that pass IP this is nothing but we are telling the controller that this is our server IP address then this is a simple print IP so that just prints out the IP of the or like server the next is we are providing the delay and coming to the node loop now over here this pose is a packet loop with a packet receiver what it does is it just looks for any packet or data that is available in our ENC2 existing model or incoming packets and over here it's a simple condition that specifies okay I have my time whatever I have defined in timer as gone past or current time I added then over here I have created a like stress variable like it's a bytes of data that I am going to send it to the server then you can just simply create it as this task dot create and over here you can just specify whatever variable you are going to use for the server like suppose I want to send ID and I just make that variable equals to code 8 or BRD8 whatever and this actually like kind of like name value pair so ID contains the value BRD8 and the server when it looks for BRD8 it needs to access the ID variable over there so this kind of like uh, when you are sending like get or post data just, uh, for both this kind of same so it doesn't depend upon, upon whatever you are using like get or post or put. so if you are interested in uh, like putting down more values you can simply write like copy over here and over here you just need to specify and I just need to change the variable name like man and I can pass any value and like that we can uh, just continue and suppose you want to specify a variable value to that particular uh, tag so you can just uh, just clear out the data and just again you can write one other print statement and over here you can just pass out the value specify and over here so I am sending two tags id and time ok and the time carries the current milliseconds of the arduino when it was got done and id contains the code id or the id whatever you can write next is start prepare over here you can just men mention the method you are going to use like it may be post get or put then the address of your web page so Suppose you are going to like use the local web page, just you can create your own. Or if you are going to use your cloud based application, you just need to create it in the server. So this is a page that I have created on my server that is 182.168.0.1. So over there in this folder I am having a page index.php. That what it does is nothing but it returns the value whatever we are sending from the RDN. Then over here we are passing different parameters like post address, 
uh, bytes, whatever we have created over here. Then the content type. Then the size of the bytes. Then we are specifying a variable session that holds the current session. Then you can just look for the response that is being provided by the server upon this call. So over here you can just write if reply not equals to this means if uh, we have got a valid reply then I can just process whatever the response was given by the server so we are going to print out the response that is like provided by the server so so let's first create a web page or so like so I am going to use PHP for it so it's so simple open up my server actually I am using XMPP and you can use it obviously so going into a htdocs folder i just need to create one more folder enc 28j68 and over here i just need to create a file that is index.php so it's nothing but a php script So, so remember over here we have sent two variables like id and time and we have used a post call so i can just write down id and the variable we or the tag we used was One more was like time. So we are just going to simply echo whatever variable we have got or whatever value we have got over there. So I'll just be going like good ID is kind of like. Whatever value we have got here, and time is like whatever time we have got on time value. So this space simply what it does is takes the ID and time from the input for or input for parameters. And just echo it back to the module. So going back to the like ID. So this is nothing but actually I have used because uh, you are going to see whenever we are printing the like whatever response has been sent by the server. We are going in numerous amount of quotes like whatever the protocol was, what all other details. So to manipulate those, I have used a particular spec, uh, regular expression, and that is basically for filtering. So let's see without filtration how it works. Upload it to the audio. Okay, here it comes. So as I was talking earlier, like along with the data returned by server over here, you can see the board ID is via date and time it whatever is been sent by the module. So along with that, we have got bunch of data like what is the protocol, the HTTP code, the take time, and the server, like all those things. So to get rid of that, you can use filters like this. So you can just pass a regular expression from your server and which the module is uh, module will be like you can filter out the response after that regular expression so just put a regular expression that is not common in your response otherwise you will be like losing the data so guys by uh, like this you can just send data or uh, to the server and get back uh, data from the server and you can just interact with the like any with any server. This is was like a demonstration of a offline server or whatever I am in my local network. 
so you can just configure it for your cloud server also so it uses the post call over here with static ip hey give me one second and uh, hope you have enjoyed the video hope you have uh, may have found this cool to you just hit the like button if you have liked it and subscribe to my channel for related updates thank you guys thanks for watching